and welcome to my video where I'm going to share all of the things that I got made in June. Hi, I'm Amelia and this is my channel So Amelia where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. I'm so glad you're watching today and I really hope you enjoy seeing all of the things that I made this June. I have on the rail here a few garments that I got made. I didn't actually do a June plans video in the end because in May I just lost my sojo a bit and so in June I just wanted to make some things that brought me joy and to follow sort of the inspiration wherever it led me and this is what I ended up making in June. So I do hope you enjoy seeing the garments that I put together over this month. Now the first one actually has a video all of its own so I'm not going to share too much about it on this video but it is my shirred dress. Now I made this for Minerva, they gifted me the fabric in exchange for a blog, so I'll link my blog below where I talk all about the sizing and the amendments that I made to the pattern. Additionally, I'll link up here the video that I made. It's a week in my sewing life video, but it's also a sew along and how I put this shared dress together. So briefly then, I was really inspired by the Hill House Home nap dresses that I've been seeing everywhere on Instagram and online and I wanted to make one of my own. So what I did was I had about three meters of this black and white cotton poplin, not a color I normally go for, but I really loved the ditzy floral print of this. It reminded me very much of William Morris, who I adore. And so I just had to have it. And actually, I love it now. I really think it works well in the summer, this black and white color. And with the shirred bodice, I think it's really, really pretty. Now I know some patterns have the shirred bodice as one piece and then the skirt piece attached separately. I didn't want to seam along this section here, I wanted just one complete piece, so I did make this finish around about here, I measured to where I wanted to finish on my hips, and then I added three tiers for the skirt. So there was quite a lot of gathering <laughs> in this dress, but I think in the end it was definitely worth the effort. Now what I did choose to do just for an added feature, hopefully you can see, is I actually attached each ruffle to the outside of the dress just to give a really pretty slight flutter effect on each gathered tier. Now because it's black and white you can't really see it but I know it's there. Now what I also chose to do for these straps was I cut a long strip of fabric and I decided to shear that and I really love the effect that that's had on the leftover fabric. It's just given it a slight flutter over my shoulders which I think is really pretty. All of the measurements for that dress, how I came up with those measurements, how I put that together all over on the sew along video so do go and give that a watch if you'd like to find out more about how I put this dress together but I absolutely love wearing this one I have been swishing about in it an awful lot over these hot summer days so that's the first thing I made this month a shirred dress from this beautiful black and white cotton poplin. Now I have wanted to make the closet core Pauline dress for a really really long time. It's been on my to make list since I think it was released as a pattern. I absolutely love the bodice with its really interesting darts. I love the open back detail and I love the puffed sleeves. So on the Pauline dress the bodice finishes at your natural waist and then there is a straight sort of section of skirt before there's a gathered tear at the bottom. Now I wasn't sure that that would really suit my figure but I really wanted to make the Pauline dress and so I was just playing around with a couple of different ideas of skirts that I could add to the dress. Gosh this is a long introduction to a make but what I wanted to play around with was a circle skirt. I wondered if that might work really nicely on the Pauline dress but I've never made a circle skirt before. I've worn some before but I've never made one. So I have the most beautiful fabric in my stash that I have just been looking at and looking at for the longest time but I've just had decision paralysis about what to make with it. But when I thought about this circle skirt I knew that I wanted to try first to see what it looked like on me before I decided to add this to my Pauline dress and I decided this was the time to use the fabric because it's not serving anybody sitting in my stash looking pretty. It needs to be on my body in a garment. So here is the fabric in question. It is this gorgeous cotton sateen by Nerida Hansen. I think it's a Brooke Gossen print or design. And I bought this one from Sister Mintaka back in 2020. So I don't think it's probably available anymore. But I do know that Sister Mintaka usually stocks some Nerida Hansen prints. So I shall link her shop below if you want to go and check out some other ones. 
I absolutely adore the colours in this. I adore the, I think it was called Squiggle Wiggle. I adore the squiggles and the spots and everything about this fabric. It's also such a lovely soft cotton. I've never sewed with cotton sateen before, but I really, really liked sewing with it and I would try it again if I see another print in a cotton sateen that I really like. So what I did for this make is I used the By Hand London Circle Skirt Calculator. I'll link it below in the description box. It's very straightforward. I think you choose whether you want a full circle, a half circle or a quarter circle skirt and then you put in your measurements and they will tell you the dimensions of the pattern piece that you need to cut out. So I did do that. I only had enough fabric in terms of width to make a half circle skirt so that is what I decided to go with and I really love it. It's got, certainly got swish, it hangs really nicely, and I've really enjoyed wearing this. I think it's such a lovely, bright, summery print. It was very straightforward to put together. Circle skirt, obviously, you just cut your two panels, you sew up the side seams. But what I did do was I added a waistband, and I prefer, oddly enough, I'm sure, a fitted waistband. I don't love elastic waistbands, I actually find them really uncomfortable as the day progresses and so I much prefer a fitted waistband. So what I actually did was I used the waistband pattern piece for the Winslow Collots since that too is finished with an invisible zip and I know that that fits me really really well. So I cut that waistband from the same fabric and then I attached an invisible zip down the side here. I found a lovely bright pink one in my stash so that went in there. So that came together super super quickly but when I tried it on I just thought you know what I'd love to give this skirt a little bit of volume and swish at the bottom. Now what I've actually done is I've added some horsehair braid. I've never used horsehair braid before but it is um, a technique that I've looked at other people using and I've really wanted to give a go myself. So after much googling and YouTubing to work out how to put this stuff in, I did manage to attach that to the hem of the skirt. Now, now like most things in sewing, the first time you do it, it's not perfect but I have learnt an awful lot about how to put this in and it's a technique I'd love to use again perhaps on a skirt of my daughter's or on another circle skirt if I make another one. But you can just see that the horsehair braid just gives this a lovely puff at the bottom and I just love the way that it makes the cotton sateen just sort of flow out and it gives it some shape and some dimensions. So that was my second make, the circle skirt using the By Hand London circle skirt calculator. Boy that's a mouthful. <laughs> Now if you want to actually see what I decided to do with my closet core Pauline dress you'll have to come back in next month's makes video because I'm still just putting the finishing touches on that dress but do stay tuned for what I did finally decide to do with my closet core Pauline dress. Now I made the skirt and I thought do you know what this needs? This needs to be an outfit and so what I decided to do was to finally jump on probably the biggest sewing bandwagon that there is and that is the True Bias Ogden Cami bandwagon. Yes, I have finally made one and I love it. So here it is. This is my Ogden Cami. Again, this fabric just brings me so much joy. It makes me smile just to see it. And also when I wear it, I just feel so happy looking at these lovely colorful squiggle wiggles. This is such a lovely pattern. It came together super, super quickly. And I think it looks really good on its own with some black jeans, which is how I've been wearing it mostly. Or if I really want to make a statement, I can pair it with the circle skirt and wear the two together. So I love that I've now got an outfit. I've actually got three outfits from these two pieces. I do find this often with true bias patterns. I find that I need to size down. So I think next time that I make a true bias pattern, I'll probably just <laughs> size down uh, initially rather than having to do alterations afterwards. So using the table of measurements on the pattern and using the finished garment measurements, I decided to make a size 8, which is already slightly on the small side from what I would probably have put myself in originally. I think my measurements placed me in more like an 8 across the bust and then a 10 across the waist and a 12 at the hip. But looking at the finished garment measurements, there was already quite a lot of ease in the waist and the hips, so I did decide to just make a straight size 8. But when I tried it on, and I know it's an oversized fit, but it looked like a tent, and it just wasn't flattering at all. And I did want a loose cami top, but I didn't want to be swamped. So what I decided to do was to just pin out the excess fabric, I just put it on inside out, pinned out the excess fabric and then it was really only about a half a centimetre, maybe three quarters of a centimetre that I needed to take off each side. So it wasn't a huge amount but I just felt like for me it made a massive difference to the way I felt in the garment and its wearability because now I love it, I will wear it and have been wearing it 
a lot. So when I held this up to the pattern pieces, I actually almost have made a size 6. So I think next time I'll just cut out a straight size 6. That seems to give me the fit that I want. It's not too small at all. It still has plenty of ease and it just is more of a size that I feel comfortable in. Now what I did with this version is I did make the thin straps as you're instructed to in the pattern and they're fine but I'm often just fiddling with them slightly to make sure they're sitting over my bra strap. So I think in the next one I make, I will just make them slightly wider to cover my bra strap comfortably. Now there is a great online tutorial video, which I'll link below, in which Lauren from Guthrie Ghani goes through how to change the pattern pieces slightly to widen these straps. But other than that, that's the only change I would make. I love the two pieces together, I love them separately, and I know that they're both going to get a lot of wear in my summer wardrobe. Now the last thing that I made for myself this month was the True Bias Zoe dress, and here it is. It's in this beautiful ribbed floral jersey from Hey So Sister. It was so lovely to sew up. I was a bit worried about sewing with a ribbed jersey because I've never sewed with it before but it was lovely to sew up and it is really, really lovely to wear. So if you've watched my videos before, you'll remember that in May, I made the Zoe tank top as a bit of a toile for this dress. It's been an interesting process making this one actually because the tank fitted beautifully. I made a size eight across the bust and then I graded out to a 12 at the waist and a 14 over the hips, which is often what I need to do anyway in most patterns. Now that fitted perfectly. It was lovely and fitted across the bust and then it just graded out really nicely over my hips. It wasn't too fitted, but it did f sort of hug my curves in just the right way. So I was super pleased with the tank top. And so I decided to do exactly the same thing for the dress. The pattern pieces looked quite similar, but I have to say it definitely doesn't fit the same way as the tank that I made. Now, the tank top I made in a jacquard jersey. This is in a rib knit, so they're slightly different knit fabrics, I suppose, but the stretch percentage is around about the same, so I was expecting a similar outcome. However, I think the pattern pieces are slightly different. It looks pretty much the same, but I think it does go out slightly wider over the hips. Now, I do love it because it's very swishy. It doesn't cling too much, so I feel quite comfortable because my hips are the widest part of me by quite some margins. I don't really like patterns that are going to accentuate my hips and this definitely doesn't. It flows really beautifully over my hips and my bottom and I just think it's really lovely and swishy. It's very very comfortable but there is just a little bit of excess fabric over the hips that I possibly would take out next time and I still think there would be plenty of ease there to allow for that fit that I feel more comfortable in. The other thing is when I tried this on I did find that there was some gaping under the arms that I hadn't had previously in my first Zoe tank. The way this is finished is so, so interesting with this binding. You actually bind this neck band first and then you bind this in one go so that you've got the arm hole and the strap sort of in one piece. So actually it was relatively easy to just unpick this little section here. I took in the side here by almost an inch actually on both sides and then I reattached the binding here. Now that's fine, it's tightened up around the bust a little bit which is perfect and it sits really nicely now over my bust and then the waist and the hips have got a lovely fluid drape to them so I'm very happy. The only other thing I would say is I'm not sure if it's the ribbed jersey, I'm not sure if it's the weight of the dress itself pulling on these straps but they do tend to stretch a little bit throughout the day. So I do find myself pulling the dress up a little bit. The V at the front is quite deep, which I really like, but I do find myself needing to pull it up a little bit as the day progresses. Now, I've got some of this fabric left over, so what I'm actually going to do, I think, is recut these straps here and reattach them and before I reattach them I'm going to add some stretch interfacing. It's not in the pattern and perhaps next month or on Instagram if you follow me there I'll update you and let you know how I get on with adding the stretch interfacing. I'm a little bit nervous about doing it because it's not in the pattern but I just think it's going to give those a bit more stability and stop them from stretching out over time. Like I say I didn't have that experience with my Zoe tank. I think that's the changes I'm going to make to this one going forward. I'm going to definitely use some knit interfacing here. I think I'll probably use it in this neckband too next time although that doesn't seem to need it as much because obviously it's not getting stretched in the same way as these straps are. The other change I'm going to make is with my fit. I am going to grade the pattern down 
I'm going to grade from an 8 to a 6 across the bust and then I'm going to grade to the 8 at the waist and then I'm going to grade out to a 12 I think over the hips. It was a 14 before, I think I'll definitely take it down to the 12, possibly even the 10 depending on the stretch percentage of the jersey that I'm working with. I absolutely love this pattern though, it's going to get so much wear over the summer. It's so lovely and floaty and cool. It's perfect for like a morning in the garden with the kids or even a walk to the park for ice cream. I love the pattern. I love the flowers, I love this raspberry pink colour. So, so many things that are great about this make, but definitely a few things I will tweak for the next time that I make it. So, for the next part of the video, I am going to just briefly mention a couple of things that I made for my children. If that's not your thing, then do feel free to pop over to my channel, pick another video and watch another one if you would prefer, perhaps my shirt dress video. But if you would like to see what I made for my children this month, then do stay tuned. So, my children are all in desperate need of summer pyjamas. And recently I won a voucher from Jelly Fabrics in a sewing challenge and I decided to spend that on some jerseys for my children. Now my two older boys chose their own and this is what they picked. My littlest boy picked this gorgeous Bears in Plains print. <laughs> it's so cute. And my older boy is a very much a Harry Potter fan and he picked this gorgeous Ravenclaw print from their selection. They did have one for each of the houses, but he's Ravenclaw, so he had to go with that. So what I did for my boys was I actually used two different patterns. I used the DIBY ABBT. Now that sadly has been discontinued now, but I will link below a couple of other t-shirt patterns that you could definitely use that are similar. But I just made the size. If you have got the pattern, it definitely fits true to size. My little boy has just turned six and I made him the age five which still has plenty of room in it. He's quite a petite six-year-old. And my older son, who's fairly average size, I made him a size nine and he is nine. So it's a lovely, simple t-shirt pattern. I used the same jersey for the neckband, which has worked perfectly. And I finished it off with one of my favorite labels from Little Rosy Cheeks. I think it's such a cute t-shirt pattern. They find it really comfortable. I make their pajama t-shirts from this pattern. I make the t-shirt t-shirts from this pattern so if you do have it it's a great one and I can definitely recommend it so that's their pajama t-shirts the jelly fabrics jersey also was a dream to work with it's sewn up beautifully and this one I just went and picked it up off the floor of my child's bedroom actually <laughs> it has been worn and worn and worn since I made it he has not taken it off apart from me removing it to wash it and give it back so this has been washed this has been worn and you wouldn't know it. It's really washed and worn so, so well. So I'm really enjoying the quality of these both to sew with and they seem to be wearing really well. Now, in terms of the shorts for my boys, I used a free pattern that is still available and it's the Everyday Elasticated Waist Shorts from Bobbins and Buttons. Now, this is a pattern for woven fabric, but having made it a few times for my boys and in fact, once for my girl as well, I knew that there's enough ease in the pattern and my children prefer quite loose and soft pyjama trousers and shorts anyway so I knew they didn't need to be fitted shorts. So I just decided to use the woven pattern for this lovely jersey, cotton jersey, and it's worked out perfectly. So here are the little shorts, these are my younger child's shorts and again it's a really lovely pattern, fits true to size. I think it goes from about age 1 to age 12 and it sews up so so quickly. There are four pieces that you cut out, there are two front pieces, two back pieces and then you fold this part down on the inside to create the waistband. So super quick pattern, I absolutely love it. I used it for my daughter earlier on this year actually to make a couple of pairs of shorts for nursery. So quick and easy. And I just finished that off with uh, some elastic in the waistband and of course another little rosy cheeks label. This one says you deserve to dream which I just love. So that's their shorts. Those are my younger boys pair and these are my older boys again with the Harry Potter print. They look so cute in them. I definitely think that that shorts pattern works perfectly well for jersey shorts if your children like sort of looser fit jersey shorts and like I say it's a lovely light cotton jersey which just works perfectly for pajamas so both the boys are very very happy with those and I've got some fabric left over actually so I may well make them another certainly another t-shirt each from that jersey uh, possibly another pair of shorts as well if I've got enough fabric. Then for my daughter, because she couldn't be left out, I made a really sweet little nighty. Now this pattern is called the Bellamy Nightgown and it's from So Much Ado. This one is a just below the knees version, but because I made it slightly bigger than her measurements, it hits her sort of mid-calf at the moment. 
but children grow fast so it will eventually hit her at the knees and there is a full maxi length version and then quite a short version as well it comes with short sleeves and with long sleeves as well and then you can either make it with or without this little ruffle at the bottom i make it with the ruffle just for the added length and then added longevity as well i suppose of the nightgown it's in this cute little bunny print with bunnies and wellies and wheelbarrows and all sorts my daughter just loves the garden so this seemed appropriate for her you finish off the sleeves with a little bit of elastic and then like I say the hem is just finished off with this ruffle it's such a sweet and easy and quick jersey nightgown she finds these really really comfortable to wear it's the second one that I've made her and yeah it gets lots of wear from her as well so I hope you've enjoyed seeing those things that I made in June like I said I just wanted to spend this month making things that brought me joy and these garments certainly have brought me a lot of joy this month I've really enjoyed wearing these and they have definitely become firm favorites in my handmade wardrobe now before I finish I'll briefly mention the top I'm wearing today this is the beautiful vetiver top by French Navy I have made two versions of this and I am actually working on a third version at the moment because I absolutely love it. It has a very cute little ruffle at the bottom of the shirt and I finished this version off with these little vintage buttons that I found at my local haberdashery. I really love where the sleeves hit, they are a lovely little length here. I really like the crop length of the shirt and I often wear it with my high waisted jeans so it's perfect. I find this such a lovely piece to wear on these slightly cooler summery days. We've got a bit of rain and cloud here today which is quite nice actually for a change because we've had a long run of really lovely hot weather. But it's nice to get my jeans back out today and this gorgeous vetiver top by French Navy, definitely one of my favourites for these slightly cooler summer days. So that's it for me for this week. I do hope you enjoyed seeing those things that I made in June. Just a couple of things for me this month and a few things for my children but I've had lots of fun making them. So I'm really looking forward to sharing another video with you next week all about some plans and new fabrics that I've got to sew with in July. So I do hope you'll pop back for that one. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would so love you to become one of my regular viewers. So do hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well, and then you'll be made aware of when I publish future videos. And lastly, if you have enjoyed today's video, do please hit that like button as that really, really helps YouTube to then share my video with other people that might also enjoy seeing some of these lovely garments. <laughs> so thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a very happy week ahead full of lots of lovely sewing and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye!